It was a challenging day yesterday for the luxury space in Europe in terms of the losses that we saw coming through from the likes of Swatch. But we'll start with Richemont. Um, it seems like, in terms of the numbers that came through, the top lines, the exposure to Europe is OK, the exposure to the US is OK, but it is Asia and China that, that, that seems to be a key challenge for Richemont. That really is. So the, the thing is, for the last three months, we've been up against this time last year mm. when we were really in that very hopeful period that China had reopened, there was revenge spending, and it was going to continue. It didn't continue. It, it did weaken in the third quarter onwards, but we're up against that time when, when you know, things were reopening, it was really going very well. That's reflected in the numbers this year. OK, so the comparables are really challenging exactly. as well. Exactly. What is, what is your take? I mean, it was such a big hit to some of the big names yesterday. I mean, Burberry was the biggest loser down, I think, about 16%. Uh, Swatch took a double-digit hit as well. What, what is going with on luxury? Is it all China, or is there something else going on? There's, there's two things going on. Um, the, the market is very polarised. So if you've got a really in demand brand and Richemont has two very in demand brands Cartier and Van Cleef and Arpels mm. you're, you're more insulated so if you're a weaker brand such as Burberry hasn't really got the cool factor despite the efforts some of the swatch brands not so in demand you're struggling there's also a question of who you're selling to we've still got this other polarization going on whereas the wealthy are still spending on jewellery on Brunello Cuccinelli cashmere on Hermes handbags but it's that more they're called the aspirational luxury because what it means is someone who's they're comfortable but they're not super wealthy and they're affected by inflation higher borrowing costs and they're the ones that are pulling back now, that's really interesting in terms of the divergence within exactly. the consumer base. So if you're really high-end, really premium, you're still holding on to customers. Exactly. Aspirational is feeling a bit, of a, bit of, bit of a squeeze. Do you have any sense as to, when, as to when the picture in China turns around? What are we hearing from executives? I mean, how much confidence is there that the China story will turn around for them? There's not a lot of confidence at the moment. The, mm. that, that is the big worry that everybody has, how long China continues to, to, to struggle. And the, it, it's not just at home in China, what everybody is waiting for is the Chinese travellers coming back. That's happening a little bit, but it's not happening to the extent that might be expected. And when they travel abroad, typically they spend more. So that's really what we're looking for. There were some hopes it might happen towards the end of this year. Now I think recovery across the sector is looking much more like a two 2025 uh, okay, factor. Okay, maybe a 2025 yeah. uh, factor. And you, you, a bit of a burn there on Burberry. doesn't have the cool factor. Andrew <laughs> Felster, you, had, you heard it officially. I mean, that certainly seems to be part of the narrative yesterday. What, what, happens, with, what happens with Burberry? Well, I, I think there's a good chance it moves down market, which I think mm. is a big mistake. They've, they've worked very hard for the last 10 years to really try and elevate it. And I think the product was good. There's been a lot of criticism of Jonathan Ackroyd, former CEO of Daniel Lee. The product was a step up, but it just never seemed to get that buzz. And what it really needed was just to inject that buzz. Because the, the question about the pricing, I, I think that, yes, they did raise prices. Perhaps they raised price a bit too quickly. But to me, that was a red herring. It just needed the bars. It needed the cool factor. I can't see how it gets that if it turns into Michael well, Kors. Harry, is Harry Styles still an ambassador for them? No, he was Gucci. Oh, he was Gucci. Yeah, I never, and that's okay, one of the I got reasons, that one wrong. I thought that's it was a, that's why reason, I don't cover That's luxury. one of the reasons why Gucci was so cool. Because yeah. right in the very early days, you had Harry Styles wearing the floral suits. You had Beyonce and head to toe head to toe Gucci, but we just never seem okay. to get that.